Hello, good morning, guys. Good morning. Yes, please. So in the last class, we discussed about two transport layer protocols. One is a TCP and the second one is UDP. Okay. These are the two transport layer protocols. Your TCP, it is a connection oriented protocol. Connection oriented protocol. While your UDP, it is connection less protocol. Means your TCP, it is going to check for connection before starting the data transfer. Okay. First of all, it is going to uh, have a process that is called as three way handshake to establish a connection. And if three way handshake is not successful, your TCP is not going to transmit any data. Okay. While your UDP, it works on request and response mechanism. Means once a request has been made by a client, your server is just going to deliver the information. It is not going to care whether they are having the connection, the receiver is receiving or not. There is no such mechanism. Okay. So there are certain problems that can arise in the communication. They are like lost packets. Okay. There can be out of order packets and can be corrupted data packets. So we were discussing about yesterday's part. So yesterday we saw about TCP and UDP. Your TCP is known as connection oriented protocol and your UDP is known as connection last protocol. Why? Because your TCP maintains a connection before transmitting any data and UDP does not check for any connection. Okay. And there is, uh, there are some problems that can arise in your communication that like lost packets, out of header packets or corrupted data packets. Okay. So in your TCP, there are mechanisms to avoid these problems. Okay. Like for lost packets, it has uh, something called as acknowledgements in case of your TCP means for each and every data packet for each and every segment, your TCP is having acknowledgements. Okay. So according to the acknowledgements, they'll come to know that what packets have been received and what are the lost ones. So the lost packets, they can be retransmitted. Then out of order packets for this purpose, your TCP is having the sequence number to rearrange them in the correct sequence and corrupted data packet. Your TCP is having checksum. Okay. Your TCP is having a checksum field in its TCP header. So according to the checksum field on both sides, on the sending side, as well as the receiving side, they are going to apply some information or some algorithm on the data, and they're going to calculate a random value. And that particular value, the sender will attach in the checksum field. Then the segment will be transmitted to the receiver. The receiver is also going to apply the same algorithm and calculate a value. If that particular value is the same with the checksum value, it means data has not changed, it means data is not corrupted. And it, if it is different, that means your data is corrupted and your receiver is going to drop that segment and ask for retransmission. Okay. But in case of UDP, you are, we are not having such, uh, you can say mechanisms like there is no acknowledgements in your UDP. There are no sequence number in your UDP. In your UDP, there is checksum. Okay. So your UDP also can detect the corrupted data packet, but it cannot recover them. It cannot ask the sender for retransmission. Okay. Clear. After that, we saw about router features that your router is a layer three device. It is an intelligent device. Okay. Make forwarding decision based on the IP addresses. It is a single, uh, each port of router is in a separate broadcast domain means per port broadcast domain and per port collision domain. Then we saw about router components and router has like components like ROM, RAM, NVRAM, and then the flash memory. Okay. And after the flash memory, you can see iOS. Okay. And router is having certain interfaces, the bootstrap program, the post program. These are some common components of your router, but physical components, physical components are these only ROM, RAM, NVRAM and flash ROM. It is going to store your bootstrap program and post program power on self test. Okay. Bootstrap program. It is responsible for booting your router, starting up your router. Okay. And your post program, it is going to check for the hardware configuration. Then RAM, it is a random access memory. Okay. Your RAM is going to store the running configuration of your router it means whatever configuration is running in your router, that particular configuration is going to be stored in the RAM. Then your NVRAM, your RAM is volatile in nature. So your RAM is going to store the information as long as it has power. Okay. So if power is not there, there will be no data in the RAM. RAM will flush out. So to keep the data without power, we have the NVRAM. Okay. And your NVRAM is going to store the startup configuration. It is going to store the startup configuration means whenever the router will start, it is going to check the NVRAM for the configuration because there will be no configuration in the RAM. So if there is configuration in the, the NVRAM, that is your startup configuration, then it is going to load this configuration in the RAM so that router can function because for fun router to function, it needs the configuration in the RAM clear. Then we have the flash that is 
having the ios of your router internet networking operating system and your ios itself it is a software program okay operating system of your router the bootstrap program again it is going to help your router to boot up post program power on self test going to check for hardware configuration if all the configuration all the hardware is working properly router is going to start otherwise it is not going to start then we saw about the router flow chart right we saw how your router boots up so first of all once you power on the router the first process happens is the post means checking for hardware configuration if it is proper then it is going to load the bootstrap program okay the bootstrap program it is going to start your router and check for the ios means they are going to check in the flash memory for operating system means they are going to load the operating system once the operating system is loaded they are going to check the nvram for startup configuration and if startup configuration is available they are going to load it in the ram and once the configuration is loaded in the ram the router will start up and if there is no configuration in the nvram ram is already empty that means your router will start with zero configuration means you have to do the initial configuration this is clear so this is your router good sir after this we saw about router configuration mode okay we saw some configuration modes of your router so the first mode we saw was the user configuration mode in this mode you can run very limited number of commands just for the monitoring purpose okay and you can identify this mode with the prompt router and greater than symbol then the second mode was there so if you type if you given the enable command in this mode in your user execution mode you will reach the privileged mode so the privileged mode again it is used for monitoring and troubleshooting the configuration of your router and you can do a very small configuration of your router also like for example you can change the date and time of your router through the privileged mode okay and identification router hash this is the identification and if you give in the command configure terminal in your privileged mode you will reach the global configuration mode okay so the global configuration mode entire configuration of your router is you are going to do in the global configuration mode clear now you are going to identify this with the prompt router config hash clear so entire configuration means configuration part will be completely in the global configuration part let's say you want to assign ip addresses so you can go to the interface configuration mode and how you can go for the interface configuration mode in the global configuration mode you have to give the command interface and then the interface name and number name and number you will have to check on the router itself okay which port of router you have connected the cable that particular interface name and number should be entered here. okay yes please so for example z 0 by 0 means gigabit ethernet 0 by 0 and your prompt how do you identify so router config if if for interface and then hash this is how you are going to identify so these are clear so this is what we discussed yesterday so if you, anyone is having any doubt you can ask me or we can move forward with the today's part any doubt yes all these things we have to do in the packet tracing yes okay entire practice we will be doing in the packet tracing okay any more doubts online people any doubt Sir, roman, mode. roman mode that will be using when i'll uh, I'm, i'll be telling you about restoring your ios i'll show you how to backup and restore your ios operating system and there we'll see how you are going to use the roman mode okay and how you can interrupt the boot process all these things this is clear okay so today we'll be studying about ping icmp and arp concept see let's say we have two systems and i have connected them with a cable now to identify these addresses i mean to identify these nodes these pcs on the network i'll have to assign ip addresses so let's say i'm assigning them ip address 192.168.10.1 192.168.10.2 okay how do i test the connectivity how do i test the connectivity so for testing the connectivity whether these two systems are connected to each other or not i'll use the ping command okay for testing the connectivity we are basically having two commands one is the ping and second command is the trace route both of these commands these are used to test the connectivity okay your ping it is going to test the connectivity means it is going to tell you whether we are having the reachability or not and it is also going to record the time let's say i have sent a ping i have sent a message to check the connectivity so from sending the message till receiving the reply what is the time duration how much time it is taking that particular duration also we are going to 
C in case of your ping. And in trace route, your trace route helps you check that which path your data is taking to reach the destination. If you want to know, let's say, for example, this is a router, so my source router, this is a destination router, and it is having certain paths to reach from source to destination. This is my source and this is my destination. So if I want to know which path my data is taking to reach from source to destination, I'm having three paths, right? So if I want to know which path my data is taking to reach the destination, I'll be using the trace route command. Okay, this is clear. All right. So to check the connectivity between two devices, we use the ping command. Ping means packet internet grouper, packet internet grouper test. So the ping command is used to test the connection and latency. Latency is the time between two network connections. The ping command sends packet of information to a specified IP address and then measures the time it takes to get a response from the specified computer or device. It is going to send the packet and then it is going to measure the time, how much time it is taking to get a response. Okay. And your ping works on the ICMP protocol. ICMP is what? Internet Control Masses Protocol. This is the protocol that is working in between. Ping is just a command. Ping is not a protocol. Ping is just a command. But in the backend, the ICMP protocol is working. Means your ICMP protocol is responsible for testing the connectivity as well as reporting the errors. Okay. Means if we are not having the connectivity, your ICMP protocol or your ping command is going to tell you that we are not having the reachability. The packets are dropping. So they will test the connectivity as well as report your errors. If you are having any errors clear the second command is trace route so this trace route command it works differently in your wind like your in your devices like in your router if you want to use this command then you have to say trace route if you are using it on systems or windows then you have to give it trace rt means trace route okay work is the same work is same they will work same they are the same command but uses is different in router you are going to see like this in windows you are going to see like this okay so let's say right now i'm using the internet and i want to know that which path my system is taking to reach the google server so i can just simply open my command prompt and i can say trace route google.com and now it is going to provide me the ips of the routers that are coming in between means Let's say again, this is my source, this is my destination, and we are having certain paths. This is source and this is destination. So each and every router will be having some IPs, right? So this is showing us the IPs and looking at the IPs, we'll come to know that which path your data is are taking to reach the destination server. And you'll also get to know how many routers are there in between. So you see, there was one packet request timeout. This is what the error reporting means it tried to go through a way and through that way it could not reach so it has to take some other way so if you see how many routers are there one two three four five and six means between my system and the google server there are total six routers this is how we test the connectivity is it clear and this is also going to help you whether let's say this is your scenario now you are not having the connectivity between source and destination okay so first of all, it is going to tell you which path it is taking. So let's consider your data is taking this path. So it is going to keep providing you IP. The first IP means let's say we reach here. The second IP means let's say we reach here. Okay. And let's say after that, you're not getting any response means my data is reaching here. After this router, my data is not going forward means the problem in the configuration is there for this router. This is we are how we are going to identify the problems that where actually the problem is. Okay. Yes. See your trace route command. It is going to provide you with the router IPs. Okay. So means if it has reached the first router, it is going to give you the IP. If it has reached the second router again, next IP. Let's say after this, you are not getting any response. Like it is blank response like this. That means your data is reaching until this router. After that, it is not going forward. So what does it mean from here to here? Connection communication is proper, but after this router, I'm not having the connectivity with the destination. That's why it is not forwarding, right? So you have to check the configuration for this router. This is how we test the connectivity and troubleshooting. Is it clear? Online people? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, please. Uh, yeah. If uh, there is something uh, issue with the router, 
mm-hmm. then will the packet come back and take another path or what see if there is a depends on the routing protocol okay we have, haven't studied st- uh, studied the routing protocols yet so depending if you have configured a static path means if, if you have configured a manual path means your router is going to take that particular way only and if that is not working you will have to configure a new path manually because you have done the manual configuration but if you have used a dynamic protocol let's say your ospf so your ospf is going to consider all three paths all these three paths and according to ospf whichever is the best path first of all it is going to check that if that path at some point of time goes down your ospf is automatically going to recalculate the second best path and it is going to forward the data through that path okay so depends whether it is static route or dynamic so in case of static we will have to manually configure everything in case of dynamic we don't need to configure we, are, we will configure the protocol and rest of the task will be done by the protocol itself is it clear okay okay thank you so your trace route command it is used to conduct a similar test to ping it is also sending packets of information but instead of dif- displaying the time it takes to connect it looks over the exact server hopes so what does it mean with the hope hope means simply you can say router okay required to connect your computer to the server like right now i check if i want to connect my computer to the google server so how many routers i need in between how many routers are there so we came to know okay there are six or seven routers clear next the protocol working in background of your ping is your icmp internet control masses protocol so your icmp is a network layer protocol means layer three protocol used by the network devices to diagnose the network com- communication issues again it is used to it is going to diagnose or troubleshoot or check the connectivity icmp is mainly used to determine whether or not the data is reaching its intended destination if the data is reaching or not reaching and also going to check whether it is reaching in a timely manner means how much time it takes the latency commonly the icmp protocol is used on network devices such as routers but also you can use the ping command on your windows linux mac os almost all the platforms icmp is crucial for error reporting and testing so testing we have seen error reporting means if the data is not reaching then it is going to te- uh, give you an error that request timeout destination host unreachable so it is going to provide you some information is it clear okay so this is all about your testing the connectivity next we have the arp protocol arp is a layer 2 protocol okay and it is very important for lan communication because entire lan communication is done based on the mac address your packet forwarding in the lan it is done on the basis of mac address now we do not know the mac address usually we go to the systems and say ping and we give the ip we give the ip we do not give the mac address but communication is happening on the basis of mac address so how do we get the mac address that mac address is provided by this arp protocol address resolution protocol so your arp protocol address resolution uh, address resolution protocol what it is going to do it is if you have the ip address it is going to provide you the mac address of that particular system means it is going to resolve an ip address to its mac address clear so address resolution protocol arp is a communication protocol used to discover the data link layer address what is the data link layer layer 2 and what is layer 2 address your mac address so it is going to discover your mac address associated with an ipv4 address ip address okay so whatever mac address is associated with an ip address means if we have a device that is using some sort of ip so if you want to know the mac address then your arp is going to provide you that mac address okay is it clear now we'll be seeing how your arp protocol works and how it is getting the mac address okay noted for easy example let's say just pick two systems i haven't to explain about the packet tracer yet right okay everyone has downloaded the packet tracer okay. then let me first tell you about this so this is your packet tracer screen you might have already installed and used this now see all the network devices you will find here in this corner okay if you click on this you will see you will have routers switches hubs wireless devices security devices and wan usually we will be using routers and switches and your end devices like your servers computers okay laptops so for routers if you click on routers you will see there is a big range of routers there are certain routers available in your packet tracer you can use any of the router okay you can use any of the router and in all the routers the basic commands will be the same okay we haven't discussed the basic commands here i'll be discussing the basic commands also 
So all the routers, they will be having the commands saved. Then if you want to go for the switches, click on the switches and there are certain switches. Like we have one, two, nine, six, zero series. We have some multi-layer switches. We have bridges. Okay. Generally I'll be using this two, nine, six, zero as it is the latest series for the layer two switches. Okay. And in case of routers, I'll be using for all practicals 2911. You can use any route. Okay. There's no foundation. I'm using 2911 because first of all, it is a gigabit. So having one GBPS of speed. Second thing, the interface names means if I am using 2911, my interface names are like Z zero by zero. So easy to type. If I'm using like this latest series 4311, 4331. So it will be having names Z zero by zero by zero. Okay. Just, so just for easy typing, I'll be using this rest, all of the practicals, all of the commands, everything will be the same for all the routers. Okay. Then for systems, we will be going to the end devices. Okay. You click on end devices and then you'll be seeing your PC, laptop, server. Then we are having printers also. TV also, phone also, tablet, smartphone, everything is there. Okay. All right. Now let's say you want to take a device. I want to take a router. So I'll click on this router and click here. I have the router. Okay. So I want to take second router. I'll click again. This, this is one way it means you just click and click again. Second way is to drag and drop. You can drag and drop the device. This is the second way. But let's say you have to use 10 routers. So are you going to click 10 times or drag and drop 10 times? No. What you can do? You can simply just press your control button of your system, then click on the router and leave the control button. And after that, keep on clicking and you'll be having multiple routes. Okay. Once you are done with this, always remember to press the escape key, because if you still see my, I'm still ready to add more routers. So if I press the escape key, I'll change back to the cursor. Then let's say I want to take a switch. So similar thing is there for the switch, press control, select the switch and then switches are there. This is one way to take multiple routers. What is the other way? You can just copy the routers. How? Let's say you have taken one router. Now you want more routers. So just press your control button and drag and drop. Like this, you can have multiple routers. So if you want to delete, either you can click on this cross button or you can press the delete key of your keyboard and then you can select whatever you want to delete. If you want to delete multiple, then you can just select all of them and press the delete key and delete clear. Now for a simple configuration, I'll be taking a router, a switch. Okay. And I'll take some host like a PC, a laptop and a server. Okay. These are the devices. Now I want to connect these devices. Let's say I have one more routers. So to connect these routers or devices, we'll be needing some cables, right? So for the cables, you see this flash symbol. This flash symbol is the connections. If you click on it, you will have certain type of cables. The first one is auto cable. Second one, the blue color, it is your console cable. Okay. Then this is copper straight through cable. This is crossover cable. This is fiber cable. Okay. Then we are having the phone cable. So generally we'll be using the straight through and crossover. So tell me if I want to connect this router with another router crossover, crossover because same devices. So crossover cable this dash cable click on this click on the router on which interface you want to connect so this router is having three interfaces z0 by 0 0 by 1 and 0 by 2 so i'll connect in z0 by 0 auxiliary and console in these ports we cannot connect this why because these are used like auxiliary port it is used to connect the router to the modem and a console port it is used to take the access of the router but we are connecting two devices to create a network we'll be using the ethernet interfaces always so click on z0 by 0 on the other side click on the router Again, select the interface and they are connected. Okay. Then how about router to switch straight through because different type of devices, click on the cable, click on the router, select the interface, click on the switch and select the interface of a switch fast ethernet zero one. Then switch to PC, laptop and server straight through because different type of devices. So do you see, I'm, I have to select interfaces, cables every time. So if it is a big topology, it is going to take a lot of time. Correct. So for this purpose, we can use the auto cable in case of packet tracer in real life. There is no concept like auto cable. Okay. You have to know about the cable and you have to connect the cables properly, but in packet tracer for easy understanding and faster configuration, you can use the auto cable. So let me just delete all these cables. So you see, there is one crossover cable and remaining are straight through cable. Okay. So 
you can use this auto cable, the flash symbol. Just press control, select this auto cable, and now you don't need to select the interface or the cable. It is going to select automatically. Yes, please. Uh, what do you mean, like in the, uh, in the real world, there's no like no concept like auto cable means you you, you will have to manually connect the cable in a particular interface. Oh, okay. You have to choose the interface. Okay, just here for easy configuration, faster configuration, we can use the auto cable so the, so that we don't have to select each and every time a new cable. Okay. But we must understand the concept that for same devices, we'll be using a crossover. For different devices, we'll be using a straight through. This is clear. Okay. IP address assignment. Your router is a layer three device. Understand the IP address. Your switch is a layer two device, does not understand an IP address. So you cannot assign an IP in your switch. Okay. And your PCs in our PCs, we can assign the IP addresses because they understand the IP address as well as the MAC address. Okay. So let's say I want to use here the network. 10.0.0.0 slash 24. This is the network I want to use here. Okay. So on my router, I'll be assigning the IP 10.0.0.1. On my PC, I'll be assigning the IP 10.0.0.2. Laptop, I'll assign 10.0.0.3. And server, I'll assign 10.0.0.4. Okay. These are the IPs I'm going to assign. So first of all, how do you assign an IP in, in your system, Windows system? So to assign an IP in your Windows system, you can simply press Windows R and say ncp.cpl. Okay. I'm not talking about packet tracer. I'm talking about real system. In packet tracer, it is very simple. You just open the system. Okay. Then go to the desktop. There you will see the IP configuration. Okay. In the IP configuration, you just type in the IP 10 0 0 1. Sorry, 2. PC is having 2. Then the subnet mask. So, what is the subnet mask we are using here? Slash 24, right? Means you will have to say, 255 255 255.0. Okay. Close. Similar configuration in the laptop also. Go to the desktop, IP configuration, assign the IP 10.0.0.3 and 255 255.255.0. Server, again, desktop, IP configuration, IP is 10.0.0.4, 255 255.255.0. Okay. So in packet tracer, it is simple. Even your, in your systems also, it is simple only. Now on the router, so you have to check the interface of the router, first of all. So what is the interface of the router here? G0 by, G zero by one. Okay. So I'll go to the router. CLI. First of all, say no. User execution mode, given the enable command. Privilege mode, given the configure terminal command. This is the global configuration mode. Now, if you want to exit, then you can say the exit commands. Okay. If you want to exit a particular mode, you can say the exit command. This is which mode? User execution mode. I have the command enabled, but I can use abbreviation. So I can use shortcut. For configure terminal, I can use config T. Means instead of typing the complete command, I can use shortcuts. And this is going to work very fine. Similarly, the command for interface is interface and interface number is gigabit ethernet. Complete name is gigabit ethernet zero by one. Instead of typing this long, I can simply type interface Z zero by one. Wow. Z for inter IN for interface, Z for gigabit ethernet and zero by one is the number. In the number, we cannot make a shortcut. Okay. Hit enter. We are in the interface. Okay. So for every command, we can use the first two letters. Yeah. First two or like that. It should be unique. The thing is, it should be unique. <laughs> okay. Can you control that? Huh? Enter configuration after the configuration. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is saying end with control Z. That means if you want to exit this mode, if I press control Z, it will go to the privilege mode again. Okay. Even control C works the same. Okay. Okay. So I'll go to the interface, interface Z0 by 1. Then IP address I want to assign is 10001. So I'll say IP address. Complete command is IP address. I can say IP add. And then the IP address 10001 and the subnet mask. Now, still, if you see the router interface is still red because it is by default in down state. To bring it up, I'll have to give the command no shutdown. And instead of saying no shutdown, I'll say no. <laughs> clear. And now you see it is green. Clear. Okay. Now we'll check the connectivity with the ping command. So if you want to check the connectivity from PC to router, PC to laptop, PC to server. So let's check the connectivity. Go to the command prompt. Okay. How do you check the connectivity? Just open your PC. 
go to the desktop and in the desktop you'll find the command prompt open the command prompt given the ping command and router ip is 10.0.0.1 and i'm having the connectivity see from where the reply is coming coming from the router and it is also giving me the time that the time is less than one millisecond okay test the connectivity with the laptop so ip2 is for the pc itself ip3 is for the laptop having the connectivity what about server i have the connectivity so ping and then you give the IP address. This is how you test the connectivity. Time to live. This TTL con time to live. Yeah, this is a concept for static route to uh, avoid the loops. Basically, this defines how many time how many times this particular packet can be forwarded. Okay, so let's say you have a network. Okay, and you try to ping from here to here. So as soon as the packet leaves your PC, it is going to have the TTL value of 128. Let's say having TTL value of 128. So this router is going to forward this packet. So it will be minus one. This router is going to forward it minus one. This router is going to forward it minus one. Means every time a router forward this particular packet, it is going to decrease by one. Okay. So in case there is a situation like, let's say we have four routers and we have by mistakenly configured that to reach a destination, we have told your R1 that go there. This router we have told go there, go there and go there. By mistake, we have configured something like this. Means your packets will be keep going and going in one loop. To stop this loop, this TTL is going to help because every time a router forward, it is going to be minus one. And there will be a time when it will be zero. And when it is zero, your packet will be discarded. This is why it is known as time to live. Clear? And this is the size of your packet, 32 bytes. Your PCs, they are going to forward four packets. Okay. Your PCs, they are going to forward. If we talk about your Windows PC, they are going to forward four packets. Your router, it by default forwards five packets to check the connectivity. Okay. So right now, if in, if you check in the PC, how many packets? Four, right? Yeah. It is. It has sent four packets. It has received four packets. And what is the loss? Zero, Zero percent loss means hundred percent success. But if you check in the router, so router ping command is used in the privilege mode. Okay, so you can say ping and let's say I want to test connectivity with 10.0.0.2. Hit enter. How many packets? Five. So if you see the exclamation mark, in case of router, if you see the exclamation mark means success. If you see a dot means lost. If you see a U means undeliverable. Okay, this is how you identify. So right now we are having all five exclamation marks. Means the success rate is 100%. Out of five packets, all five packets have been delivered and reply has been received. This is clear. How do you test the connectivity? Okay. Okay, Ajay, if it is lost or undeliverable, mm -hmm. then it will show in the exclamation mark instead of that dot and U. Yes. The first For one is success. The... Yes. Second one is if it is lost, then it will show as dot over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Means it has sent the packet, but no reply has been received. And if there is no path, your router doesn't know how to reach a particular IP address, it is going to show you you undeliverable. Okay. Is it clear? Can you show us the example for antenna? Yes. Try ping any IP. <coughs> Let's say ping 11.0.0.1. Oh, it is showing the dot. Let me see another IP. Let's check another IP. Ping. 10.0.0.6. I'll check and tell you. Okay. But it shows undeliverable. You. I mean, uh, it shows when uh, the system is connected to the router. Mm -hmm. But I do have no responsibility. The same thing if I have connected a system, let's say 10.0.0.6. This is a system I have connected, but the system is not having the IP. Same thing. This is the same thing because if it is not having the IP, means we cannot get the MAC address without the IP and without MAC address, we cannot have the communication. Okay. So for this purpose, I'll have to, uh, I'll show you about the app. Okay. And this undeliverable example, I'll check today and tell you tomorrow. Okay. But in some cases, it, it is definitely going to show you the U. This is clear. Okay. Now let's go for the app. So this basic about Cisco packet tracer, how we are going to connect the devices, how we are going to test the connectivity. This is clear. How we are going to assign the IP to different devices. This is clear, right? Okay. Now we'll see about ARP. And with the ARP, I'll also show you how your switch 
communicates. Okay. Let's say on PC we have the IP 10.0.0.1. From this PC we have the IP 10.0.0.2. This is clear. So initially what is going to happen? All these PC switches, they are going to have a database. Okay. Your PC switch, they are going to have a database. Like your PCs, they are going to have a ARP catch. Your PC is going to have a ARP catch. Your switch, they are going to have a CAM table. And again, your PC is going to have a ARP catch. This is ARP catch for PC1. This is CAM table. Or you can say MAC address table. Okay. And the next we have is your ARP catch for PC2. Now, these ARP catch CAM table, these are the databases your system or nodes use to make forwarding decisions, to store some information. Okay, this is uh, that's why they are the intelligent devices because they store some information. Okay, so in the app case, there will be information like which IP address has what, what the MAC address. Okay, your CAM table has the information at which port what MAC address is connected, and again, your app catch has the information what IP address has what MAC address. So, so the CAM address is stored in the switch. Yeah, for the switch. This is for the switch. Cam table is in the switch, also known as the MAC address table. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to show you the MAC addresses of these PCs. So for easy understanding, I'll just change the MAC addresses because right now they are having some random MAC address. Okay. But in real devices, you will not be able to change the MAC address. It is fixed. Okay. Just in packet tracer for easy understanding, I'm going to change. So for PC one, it is all zeros and one. And for PC2, we'll keep it all zeros and two. Now, how do you check the ARP catch for PCs? So you can say ARP hyphen A, ARP hyphen A. So if I check the ARP catch on my PC1, I'll go to the command prompt and I'll say ARP hyphen A. And it is saying no, no ARP entries found. Okay. What about PC2? Same. No ARP entries. Okay. Let's check the MAC address table of your switch. So go to the switch, go to the CLI. Same user execution mode. If you type the enable command, privilege mode. To check the MAC address table, you can say show MAC address table. Hit enter. Do you see any entries here? No, there is no MAC address, no port information. Clear? Okay. So initially, this means initially our devices, they do not know which device is available at what MAC address or what other, like your PC one. If we consider about this, your PC one, it does not know what, where is PC two and where is the switch. Similarly, your switch doesn't know about PC one and PC two and your PC two doesn't know about the PC one and switch. Okay. okay. So we are going to assign the IP addresses now. IP configuration, I'll say 10 0 0 1. Okay, subnet mask I'm keeping default. This is also default. This is clear. So right now these devices do not know about each other and their databases are empty. Now, as soon as I start the communication, let's say I go to the PC one and I give the command ping 10.0.0.2. Okay, so ping command means it is going to generate an ICMP packet. In the ICMP packet, it is going to have some information. Okay. Let's say this is ICMP packet. And in this, it is going to have the information about source IP, destination IP, source MAC address, and destination MAC address. Correct. So your PC knows its own IP because it is itself is the source. So it is going to say 10.0.0.1. Correct. Then destination IP we have given in the command that we want to communicate with 10.0.0.2. So destination IP is there. Source MAC address, PC1 knows its own MAC address, means all zeros and one. But does it know about destination MAC address? No, because for destination MAC address, it is going to check in the app catch and there's no entry in the app catch, means this information is missing. And if an information is missing in a packet, the packet cannot be forwarded. So what your PC1 is going to do, it is going to generate a new packet, okay? It is going to stop this packet, keep on hold, 
and it is going to generate a new packet and that packet is going to be ARP address address resolution protocol okay in ARP we are having two messages one is the ARP request and second is the ARP reply okay so first of all it is the PC is going to make ARP request because it wants to know about the MAC address so this will be ARP request in the ARP request your ARP request is a broadcast message okay because it doesn't know where is the destination so to reach the correct destination it is going to broadcast so again the information will be source ip destination ip source mac and destination mac source ip pc1 knows its own ip destination we have given in the packet the command source mac pc1 knows its own mac address and destination as it is a broadcast the destination mac address is going to be all s because the last or the maximum value is the broadcast now information of your ARP request is complete means your ARP request will be forwarded has been forwarded it is entering the switch on fast ethernet 0 slash 1 so first of all your switch is going to do what it is going to make an entry in the cam table that on yes, fast yes please. Now, how do it uh, get an IP address on destination you gave the command ping and in the ping command you gave the ip where you want to connect we gave the ip right if i want to ping a system i have to give its ip in ping this particular ip still having doubt how it connects to destination yeah how it connects to destination where you want to ping okay simple example let's say you want to send a letter to your friend so how the postman will know how the postman will know where to deliver the letter because you have given the address on the particular packet or whatever your letter so we, uh, we use the uh, aesthetic uh, or any kind of routing no 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 routing here no router here if no router means no routing no connection how is connection established that is what i'm trying to explain that how this communication is actually happening see the thing is we have given 1002 i'm saying i want to test the connectivity with 1002 so we have told that we want to test the connectivity with that particular destination okay we have given the destination ourselves then your pc is generating all these packets first packet was not having the information we were not having the destination mac address so to get that mac address we will be using the ARP request okay so still we haven't leave our system these two packets they have been generated on this system itself okay all right yes layer two protocol yeah because when we'll see about the app header okay it is encapsulated by a ethernet header we'll come to that means in the ethernet header you'll have this ip information app is just going to bring you the mac address of the device okay okay let me show you the app header this is your app header okay so it will be encapsulated by a ethernet header and then we'll have the app information okay so we'll have given the destination ip and source ip because your pc it is going to check whether the packet is for me or not how looking at the ip address your pcs understand right your pcs are understanding the ip addresses only your switch does not understand okay is it clear or still having doubt the main thing is when the router on our pc starts the first thing is icmp starts the program yeah we have given the ping command means first and first packet that will be generated that will be the icmp but if it fails to get the, the information or uh, establish the connection then only the rp no 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 your pc is creating the information of for the icmp it is packing up the icmp packet but in the icmp packet some information is lacking that is the destination mac address so RPP to get that destination mac because without that information we cannot forward how your switch is going to forward the information if we are not having the destination so to get that information the rp request is generated yes layer. because we are lacking some information in our icmp packet okay then we'll be adding the rp request to get the mac address to complete the information of your icmp packet whatever information we will be receiving in the reply of this packet that information will put here and then your icmp packet will be completed and then this packet will move forward yes please so uh, 
So right now uh, we are saying that we are going to send the SMTP packet. Mm -hmm. But the SMTP packet already has mm -hmm. a source IP or uh, a destination IP address. Yes. Doesn't that consider as a Got it. Any more doubts? Okay. I'll do one thing. Let me just complete this theory and I'll show you each and every packet how they are traveling. Okay. <laughs> that should clear your doubts. So as soon as this ARP request reaches your switch, your switch is first going to check that at which port it is arriving. So the port is fast Ethernet 0 by 1. Correct. Then your switch is going to open this packet and it is going to check for the destination MAC address. IP address switch does not understand. So it is going to check for the destination MAC address. So the destination MAC is OLF means which will know okay it is a broadcast message and switch is a single broadcast domain device. That means whatever broadcast is arriving on a switch, switch is going to forward it out all other ports. Means it is going to be forwarded this side. Correct. So the ARP request is going to travel this side. Now this ARP request is going to reach your PC. Once it reaches the PC, the first task your PC is going to do is create the ARP catch. Okay. In the ARP catch, it is going to see, it is going to like open this ARP request and it, it is going to see from where the packet has came. 10001. Okay. Make an entry that IP address I have received is 10001. Then what is the MAC address? All zeros and one. Clear. Then, then it is going to check whether what is it? It is an R request means it is asking for MAC address. So your PC2, it is going to reply. It is going to again generate a packet. Let me change the color. So it is going to generate a packet here. And that packet will be your R reply. Reply to this request. Again, in this packet also, there will be source IP. There will be destination IP. There will be source MAC and destination MAC. So source IP, PC2 knows its own IP. Destination IP, it is, it is going to check whether from where the request has came, 10001. So I have to reply to 10001. Source MAC, PC2 knows its own MAC address, 002. Destination MAC, now destination IP is 10001. For MAC address, it is going to check the ARP catch and it is having an entry for 10001. What is the MAC address? All zeros and one. Clear? Packet is complete. It is going to forward. Okay. This is the ARP reply. Now this ARP reply reaches the switch on the port F0 by 2. So the first task your switch is going to do is F0 by 2. Oh, sorry. I didn't note the MAC address. Okay. Now it so that it has arrived on F0 by 2. Now what is the MAC address? All zeros and 2. Okay. Now your switch is going to check for the destination and the destination is all zeros and one to forward to this destination switch is going to check the cam table in the cam table. It is going to see that for all zeros and one, I'll have to forward the packet to F zero by one. So this is this time it is not broadcast. It is unicast and it is going to forward this side. You are reply PC one. First of all, it is going to make an entry that for 10 zero zero two. What, what is the source Mac address? all zeros and two. Okay. Now the ICMP packet, it will come back into the picture. So, so long it was just on hold. Okay. So again, your PC is going to check. Okay. For 10, 0, 0, 2, what is the MAC address in the app catch? All zeros and two. And this time the information will be complete. And if the information is complete, this time your ICMP packet can travel. Okay. Now your switch, it is going to see where is the destination, all zeros and two. For all zeros and two, I have to forward out F0 by two. So your ICMP will be forwarded this side. Is it clear? Then when it is going to reply, it is going to have the same information and the same way the packet will reach back to PC1. This is how the communication is happening. Is it clear? Okay. Now we'll capture the packets and we'll see if how each and everything is happening. Okay. So in your packet tracer, you are having two modes. One is the real time mode and one is the simulation mode. Real time mode works like real time because in real time, we cannot see the or capture the packets. Okay. We cannot see how the packets are traveling. We have to capture the packets for that. So if you want to capture the packets, you will have to go to the simulation. mode. Click on the simulation mode and just close this. That's it. You are in the simulation mode, right? 
Now let's say I go to the PC one, go to the command prompt, and I'll say ping 10002. Same process. You see how many packets are generated? Two packets. First packet is the oh, this is the ICMP packet. And this is the R uh, packet. Okay, I'll open the ICMP packet. We have layer three information, but is there any layer two information? No. Let's see. There's no layer two information. So this packet cannot forward. Okay. So for this purpose, a new packet has been generated. Your R packet. Open the R packet. We are having Ethernet information. We are having the Ethernet header, right? And if you want to see the headers also, this is the ARP header, this is the Ethernet header. Okay. And this is it, how it looks like. This is the Ethernet header, this is the ARP header. They are going to have the information like source address. And what is the destination if you see? All F means broadcast. Okay. So, first of all, you will see your green packet is going to travel. If I forward the packet, which packet is traveling? Green packet. Okay. So as soon as this packet reaches on the switch, your switch, it is going to note the MAC address of. So I'll say show MAC address table. Note it that on fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, the MAC address is all zeros and ones. Okay. And still, if you check on your PC2. Again, I'll say ARP hyphen X. No entries. Why? Because the ARP request has not reached to the PC. Now your switch, it is going to forward this message to all the ports except the port it was received. Okay, it was not, it will uh, it will not uh, forward the packet on the port it was received. There's a split horizon rule. We'll be explaining that. So this packet will reach your PC2. As soon as this packet reaches the PC2, entry has been done. Okay. And now if you open this packet, mm -hmm. there are two things you are going to see. One is the in and one is the out. In means the packet came from PC1 to PC2. What is the information in that packet? Out means the reply. PC2 to PC1. In means incoming. Out means outgoing. Okay. So incoming packet destination was broadcast. But outgoing packet destination, if you see, all zeros and ones that is your PC one. Correct. Okay. Now this packet is going to reach your switch and switch is going to make an entry for PC two also. Check on the switch created an entry and then for the destination, what is the destination? All zeros and one, your switch is going to check the cam table. So in the cam table for all zeros and ones, which ports, which will forward the packet zero by one means it will be forwarded this side. And once this packet reaches this side, the ARP information has given the MAC address. And now you see your ICMP has come back into the picture. And if you open this ICMP message, you'll see sources, all zeros and ones and destination is all zeros and two. So now this packet information is complete. There is also layer three information, but I don't know why it is not available. It is a packet tracer glitch or something. Okay. So now you'll see, okay, let me check in the, yeah. In the packet details, it is showing, but in here it is not showing. See in the packet details, if you see the IP adder source IP is 10.0.0.1, destination IP 10.0.0.2. Okay. And then if you see the source Mac and destination Mac information, so source Mac in source Mac is all zeros and one. And destination MAC is all zeros and two. So now your ICMP will travel and your switch is going to check destination is all zeros and two means I will have to forward on F0 by two. This packet reaches your PC. Okay. There is already our catch. Okay. And it is going to reply. So now you can see both the headers, the incoming and outgoing. This is clear. Yes or no? Say for example, uh, when in the switch, uh, you said that there is a MAC one and there are a MAC address that will be stable. Yes. 
So that's the same concept works on D DHC because in DHC the, the IP addresses were of the clients for you know changes each and every time. Hmm. See, DHCP is automatic IP address assignment. So every time your DHCP server assign an IP address, it is going to capture the MAC address. That's it. Okay. And right now, no need to confuse because we haven't discussed about these things. Okay. Clear. Now your PC2 is going to reply back. And the same process will keep on happening. So this was the first ICMP packet and first reply. So in your PC1, you are going to see one replies there. So total PC, how many sent? Four. One is done. This is the second one. Second request, second reply. Okay, these are some extra packets from the switch. This is the third. And after this, this is the fourth. Four messages and four reply. 100% success, 0% loss. So, we studied about R. So we saw how your art process works. Okay. Like if initially the PCs or the nodes, they do not know about each other, right? So if they do not know about each other, how they are going to communicate because for having the communication for forwarding the data packets, we need both IP address and Mac address information. Okay. IP address information we can provide because we generally remember the IPs or we can ask the IPs, but Mac address information we do not remember. So that Mac address information will be provided by your R. so that you don't have to remember mac address of each and every system because for each and every system mac address are random information i mean fixed information and these are different values so we cannot remember more than like you say hardly you will remember two five or ten okay is this clear any doubt in the R? online people so the reason we see uh, the latency 8 ms is because of the ARP uh, packet, right? On the first one. Yeah, the first one latency will be higher. After that, the latency yeah. will be lower. Okay. And once you have done the capturing the packets, you can go back to the real time and start. Okay. Is it clear? Now, if I see, if we read about the ARP, so ARP is a request response or request reply protocol in which one device send a request to another device asking for some information like our PC one was asking for the Mac address to PC two, to which the other device will reply with the required information. The PC two is going to reply with its own Mac address. It is a message exchange pattern. They are exchanging the messages. Our packets are encapsulated by a link layer and are distributed only in a particular network. Link layer means ethernet header. Above the ARP header, there will be all, always be a Ethernet header. So these are known as link layer protocol, means layer two protocol. Is it clear? Now, if you see the ICMP packet, how does the ICMP packet looks like? What is the information? So in the ICMP packet, you will see the source MAC and destination MAC. There will be a type field. There will be a source IP and destination IP field, and there will be a protocol number. So protocol number for your ICMP is one okay source ip and destination ip let's say i am giving the command ping 10002 on pc1 so means my destination is 10002 and source will be 10001 the type field this type will tell whether it is icmp echo request or reply means the ping request is there or ping reply is there so there are two types if it is type 8 if you see in this field 8 that means it is icmp echo request means you have initiated the ping. And if a system is replying the ping, it is going to deliver with the code zero, type zero. Okay, I'll be showing you this also, the type field. Source MAC and destination MAC will be having through the ARP. We are already having in the ARP catch. So source MAC is the on ARP. So I'll just write the last portion, 0001, and the destination will be 0002. Okay, so let me show you the type field also. Again, if I capture and go to the PC one, go to the command prompt and say ping 10002. If I open this packet, this is layer three information. Source IP is there, destination IP is there. What is the ICMP message type? Eight. Eight means it is ICMP echo request. Okay. And when the reply is, when we are getting the reply, okay, this is the reply message. 
So I'll show you. What is the type? Zero, Zero means it is a reply. And you can see the ICMP header also inside this. This is the IP header, this is the Ethernet header, and this is your ICMP header. So an ICMP packet is having all the information. Okay. It is having see source MAC and destination MAC, source IP and destination IP, and it is having <clears throat> ICMP message, the protocol number one, and type will be decided. This is type zero. Okay. And for type eight, the code will be eight. Clear. Okay. Next, what we have? This is the R packet information. So your R packet is, is going to be encapsulated by a Ethernet header. So according to the Ethernet header, you will have the source MAC and destination MAC information. There will be a type field. This type field is going to tell this belong. This type field belongs to the Ethernet header. Okay, so basically in Ethernet header, this type field is going to tell you that what type of protocol is encapsulated inside. Okay, like there will be a different code for your IP, IPv4, IPv6, and for ARP, let's say right now we are talking about ARP, so it will be 0x0806. If you see this code in the type field, that means there is an ARP packet information inside. Okay, and in the ARP header, you are going to have the source MAC, destination MAC, source IP, and destination IP. Again, your app is also having app request and app reply. So in your app header, there will be information, something called as opcode. If the opcode is 0001, that means it is a request. If it is 0002, that means it is a reply. Okay. And you can verify this. Let me show you. So for this purpose, I'll have to clear the app catch of the PCs. So let me just see ARP hyphen. ARP hyphen AA is going to show you the ARP if you want to delete ARP hyphen D. And it is going to delete the ARP page. Delete it. Similarly, I'll go and delete on PC2 also. Now I'll go to the simulation mode to capture the packets. Go to the PC, ping. So new ARP packet will be generated. Again, two packets generated. One is the ICMP and one is the ARP. This is your ICMP. This is your uh, if you open the R packet, okay, you need to see this side. Encapsulated by Ethernet header. First of all, there is an Ethernet header. In the Ethernet, source IP, uh, source MAC, and I mean source MAC and destination MAC. This is the information. In the R, you have the opcode value. In the R header, we have the opcode value. Opcode value is 0001. That means it is a R request. Okay. We are having the source MAC 0001. Destination MAC is, is not known. Then source IP is 10.0.0.1 and destination IP is 10.0.0. So this 0000, this is telling your second system that your PC one is asking for the MAC address. For the switch to understand it is a broadcast, this is the Ethernet header and where the destination is all X. Okay. And when the reply will come, our reply will come, this opcode value will change to 0002. And you can see the type field of the Ethernet header. 0806 means our packet is in, in, uh, encapsulated inside the Ethernet. Now we'll see the reply also. So if you see this reply, what is the opcode value? And this time the source MAC address information is there. Destination MAC address information is there means the information is complete. And once the information is complete, your ICMP packet will complete and start traveling. Is it clear? Online people? Yes. Okay. Then we have a small concept about ZR. So if you talk about R, you have certain type of R. Your, you have a R protocol. You have a reverse R protocol. You have an inverse R protocol. Okay, you have a Z R. You have a proxy R. These many type of R protocols are. Your R protocol, it is resol uh, resolving from IP to MAC. Inverse R and, and reverse R, they are resolved from MAC to IP. Okay, but they are not being used right now. Like your reverse R, it has been replaced by your DHCP and boot P. Okay, so these are not used. Your inverse R, it was used in the frame relay technology. And your frame relay technology, it has been replaced by the MPLS. You'll study in your CCNP. Then we have the ZARP and proxy ARP. 
So these three we are going to discuss. Art we have already discussed. GR we will discuss now and proxy R maybe tomorrow. Okay. So what is the GR? Let's say we are again having two systems. Okay. So if you assign an IP address to any system, before accepting the IP address, your system is going to check whether the same IP is being used in the network. Okay, let's say first understand this. A G R or gracious R is an R response. Basically, it is what R response means no request required for this. That was not promoted, that was not prompted by an R request. The gracious R is sent as a broadcast. GRP is always a broadcast as a way for a node to announce or update its IP to map Mac mapping. Okay. To the entire network. So what is this basically? Let's say you have a switch. Okay. You have certain systems. You have assigned the IP 10001, 10002, 10003. And they are having the MAC address, let's say A, B and C. According to that, they will have the communication. So means your PC one, it is in the, uh, in the R catch, it is going to have the information that your 10.002 is having the MAC address B and 10.003 is having the MAC address C. Correct. And your PC two, it is going to have the information 0 0.1 is going to have the MAC address A, 0 0.3 is going to have the MAC address C. Similar way, 0 0.1 is having the MAC address A, 0 0.2 is having the MAC address B. By communicating with each other, they will make, create their R cache values, right? Now, let's say at some point of time, the IP address of this system C changed. So how other systems will come to know? So it is going to announce that my IP to Mac address mapping has been changed before my IP address was dot three and Mac address was C, but now my IP address has changed to four. So it is going to announce and it is a broadcast. So switch is going to forward it out all the pools. Okay. And all other systems will come to know about this and they will update their R cache that, okay, it is not three. Now it is four. This is one of the things that is announcing IP to Mac mapping. Second thing it is used to find out duplication means let's say if you add a system and if you try to assign the IP 10004, so we are already having 10004. So this system is going to send a GR and it is going to check whether the same IP is being used in the network for checking what it is going to do in the source IP. Also, it is going to say 0 0.4 in the destination IP. Also, it is going to say 0 0.4. So if there is 0 0.4 available already in the network, that particular system is going to reply and your PC will know that this address is already used. So it is not going to accept the address. Okay. And one of the features is the redundancy purpose. This redundancy purpose, I'll be explaining you when we study the protocol. FHRP because for that we will need to understand the FHRP protocol. Okay. But remaining things IP to Mac mapping or duplication. I hope this is clear for the easy practical. I'll just do one thing. If you see this system is having 10002, correct. What I'll do, I'll try to assign the same IP to this system. 10002. Do you see? This address is already used in the network. How they come to know? Zia. Is it clear? So this is a small concept about Zia. Any doubt in today, today's part? So GR is automatically generated all the time. Yes, it is automatic because it is not uh, generated by risk. Like even your R request, we do not generate. Okay. Yeah, Zia you can generate when you are if you are a hacker. You can generate because. This ZR, it is simply used for to create an attack MITM, man in the middle attack, to steal information. Okay, whatever communication is happening in the network, to steal that information, you use the ZR. Okay, that is also known as the ARP spoofing attack. Because basically, what we are doing, we are sending a ZR. So all other systems they are they are going to change their MAC and uh, ARP catch. And when they will change the ARP case, they are going to send the information to us. This thing will, I'll show you this thing when we are studying about DHCP snooping. This is a concept in our CCNA. I'll be showing with the practical. Okay. We'll see how this attack is happening. But 
only theoretical part practical we cannot do practical you will see in your ch if you have the course okay is this clear so any doubt in today's part about paying icmp or app clear online people any doubt no <laughs> okay guys then i'm done for the day we'll meet tomorrow have a good day guys bye